Hello, hello, my nasties. Welcome back to the channel, heathens. It is that time. It is time for a color and chat. It is a little after midnight, and what is an adult to do after midnight but color? Am I right? So today we are, of course, going to be coloring in Retro Deco. We have not seen this book featured in a color and chat in ages, and the reason that I picked it today is because there's something in the air. I have sold several copies, uh, several signed copies of this from my website. I do have my, these books are available on Amazon, of course, and then they are available as downloadable printable PDFs. And then on my personal website, my art and fashion boutique, Coconati, I sell signed copies of my books when I have them. And this month I have sold a few directly from that website. So something's going on, there's something in the water, people are picking up retro deco. And so I thought, you know, let's show her some love. That is a sign to show her some love. So I am finally going to color a page. I already know, I already know. I don't need to flip through it and decide on a page. The one that I want to color is this page, which has always been one of my favorites from the book. What did I, what is the sticky note? What is the sticky note? Oh, we were gonna do, hmm, I've always wanted to color this one, but for some reason I had a sticky note. This is, uh, this must be an older sticky note that I put in here a while ago. Oh God, so what are we gonna do? Are we gonna color this one? Or are we gonna color this one? The disco vampire, the disco neon vampire, or, hmm, conundrum. Let's, um, shoot. Now I'm going to waste time. Now I'm going to waste so much time trying to decide on a page. You know what? Here, this is what's going to be the deciding factor. By the time this video is up, it'll be creeping up on October, if not already October. So in the spirit of the spooky season, let's go ahead and do the vampire. Yeah, makes sense. Toss a little backing sheet in there and I have not pre-selected any colors or anything like that. Uh, let's go ahead and do that now. She's going to be neon because she's got the new wave neon thing going on there. So what color is pink? Duh. Let's do pink and uh, let's do purple. And I even want to toss maybe some teal or rather um, no, like a neon bluey teal, maybe? <sighs> hmm. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let's just go ahead and start tossing color on here because, as I mentioned, it is past midnight and yet I'm drinking coffee. Idiot. But, you know, I tend to do that sometimes. But let's not waste any time. I don't want to spend too much time working on this at the moment. We will carry on with it tomorrow, but let's see. For a background, are we going to do a nice, bright, neon, annoying yellow? I think we're going to. I think we're going to. So we've got classic fluorescent yellow for the background. I tend to like using fluorescent yellows as backgrounds. doesn't always work, but when I want to use it, I want to use it. And I don't want to think too much about this. When do I ever? When do I ever agonize over my coloring pages though, right? Never. You know I don't do that. That's not my gig. But uh, let's get this background done. You know what I'm going to do? This I probably shouldn't have even filmed any of this before <laughs> diving in. I was going to say, well, since I have nothing else to say at the moment, I'm going to go ahead and lay down base colors <laughs> in silence. So I am. I'm going to lay down base colors. You already see the colors that I selected. I'm going to go in and add the pink to the crosses that are in the background. See, let me explain this page. Let me let me explain to you the thought process behind the creation of this page. If you couldn't already tell, this book, Retro Deco, is inspired by the Art Deco Revival that occurred in the late 70s, but especially into the 80s. We've got that new wave, postmodern art deco influence situation in the shapes. 
you know, if, if you know Art Deco at all, you will recognize some of that. Not so much in this page. This is more of a 1980s style synth wavy vampire girl, but in the rest of the book, you'll definitely see some of those elements. But of course, me being me, uh, I can't just make a book without infusing a little bit of something alternative, a little bit of something spooky. Not always, but there's always something a little bit, um, a little bit to the left of the usual in my books. And in this instance, it's everything that I love. It's the 80s. It's a touch of the 70s with the disco in there. It's the Art Deco, which you know I love. It's fashion. It's funky style. And I needed to include a spooky girl somehow, but she's a spooky girl in the retro fabulous synth wave aesthetic. She's a vampire, but she's a disco loving 80s new wave vampire. So she's not your typical boring, you know, goth vampire. No offense to any goth people watching my channel, though I don't think there are too many because I don't fit into the goth mold. I may draw spooky things, but I'm not an all black everything doom and gloom kind of person. You know, it's just not my gig. But I do love me a vampire, <laughs> clearly. And yeah, so I wanted to toss in my interpretation of what a synth wavy inspired vampire would look like. So here she is. She's got the traditional Dracula, Bella Lugosi collar. She's got that sexy kind of fetish outfit, but she's got the disco fabulousness going on. And these crosses are supposed to represent tombstones, graveyards, cemeteries, all that, but they're neon. So that was the thought process behind this. Um, some of my pages, I mean, there's thought behind all of my pages, but some of them don't usually have such a backstory, but that was the, that was the idea with this one. So having said all of that, that chit chat got me to the end of the yellow background, which is great. So I'm going to show you just a touch of what we are going to do with the neon and then we are going to move on. So this is just a fluorescent pink Copic. And you know what we should do? We're going to play with a couple of different colors, a couple of different shades of pink. I have, let's see, this one. Okay, cool. So we're going to do, I don't know how this is going to, oh, well, already getting ahead of myself. I was going to say, I don't know how this is going to work, but it may not work at all, considering that this marker is clearly on its way out. I've used this marker to death. I have reduced this marker to death. It is definitely on its way out, and it is a candidate for fully replacing it with a replacement, so we will do that, but I think... God, it may, it may be able to be reduced just one time, maybe two more times before it completely dies. So we'll, we'll try to milk it for the sake of this color in chat, our little neon vampira. Because what I wanted to do here is kind of play with not so much a gradient necessarily, but I wanted to play with a couple of different shades of pink for the neon to give the illusion that the neon is uh, kind of radiating out, darker in the middle, brighter on the edges, right? So something like this. Yeah? See what I'm trying to achieve here, possibly? Maybe we may need to, uh, we may need to go in and do a little bit of blending. Yeah, I think this will benefit from some blending. So I thought I was going to keep this simple, quick, and painless, but you know me, I always say, oh, I'm going to keep it quick, and then it turns into three hours, or oh, I'm going to keep this simple, and then it turns into me pulling out one of every, every one of my supplies and tossing it onto a page. So it is what it is. I do my thing, you know. You're no stranger here, and if you are new here, hi, hello, welcome, fresh meat, welcome to the freak show that is my YouTube channel. Pretty tame freak show, I must say. 
bit of freak show nonetheless. Okay. So when I say we are going to blend a little bit, it's going to be one of those situations where we have to work quick because you know what I tell you, never, 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 never listen to people that tell you you cannot blend on porous paper, which this is because you certainly can. You just have to know what you're doing and be quick. That might sound harsh, but isn't that the reality of life is that people will tell you something is impossible not necessarily because it is impossible be because they are too weak and incompetent to figure things out for themselves or lazy so it just is what it is okay but this marker is definitely dying but you can see you can see what we're doing here we're doing a little little bit of a blendy blend See what's going on here? It's working, it's working. Again, you just have to be quick. But that is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to complete the rest of the crosses off camera. And at this point, I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything else on this page. I just really was in the mood to do a little bit of coloring today. I did not want to stall anymore on getting a new color and chat out because I have been stalling on making YouTube videos because I've been trying to complete my next coloring book, which I am happy to announce at this moment has been completely, no, no, that's, I no, that is a lie. I have one, possibly two pages left to ink. So it is almost completely inked. Yay for that. It's still going to be quite a ways away before I actually release the book. I'm taking it slow on this one, slower than usual, because I like to be on a fairly rigid schedule when I create coloring books. This is the first one that I've taken a bit of an extended break instead of taking one month in between coloring books, I took practically two. And uh, yeah, I just decided to try something a little bit different. Just take it easy for a minute and then get back to work later. So that's what we're doing. I am going to go ahead and complete. The, I almost want to do a different color though. Should we do a, a, a red and a pink? Red, pink, pink, red. No, 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 let's go ahead and keep it pink. So, okay, I'm going to finish the base colors on the crosses and then I will check back in with you, not later today, but tomorrow. Hello, hello, it is the next day. Let us continue working on this little lady. I am going to lament the fact that you cannot see the neon colors adequately or accurately on camera because you know how it works. Neon colors do not photograph well, neither does glitter, of course, because of the reflective qualities of it. It bounces the light back and it just, it doesn't quite work. But neons and fluorescents, which I, they're the same thing really, but they simply don't, they don't translate. They get lost in translation. And I tried to post a photo of this on Instagram yesterday, and I just don't think that you guys could really see it. Well, I posted it to my stories, but in progress shots. But that is why we are going to attempt to give the illusion of it being bright and sparkly through the use of highlighting later. Yeah, so it'll work. It'll all work out in the end. But uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, it's looking good. And given that disco balls are, of course, comprised of tons and tons of little black, or rather glass squares, they reflect all of the light and color around them. So that is why I'm not going to think too hard about what the disco balls are going to be colored with. It's just going to be a lots of pink, lots of yellow, neon orange, that sort of thing. And also, given the spherical nature of disco balls, they don't capture just what's in front of them. They are also going to pick up colors from around the room. So I'm going to be introducing different colors into the disco balls as well. 
uh, that sounded very technical for a freaking disco ball conversation, but it is what it is. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Now, when it comes to actually coloring in disco balls, mm, there is a method to my madness in some cases. Today, we're not going to worry too much about it because it's just a coloring page and I'm not too worried about getting things super, super accurate. But with disco balls, the way that I would advise if you are attempting to stick with technicalities, you know, if you want to be technically correct, what you're going to want to do is treat a disco ball just as you would a, uh, a sphere. So if you have a sphere in front of you and you have the lighting hitting the sphere at a certain angle, that's how you are going to want to color in a disco ball. I'm not going to get into it today because I'm not doing it, but... Um, Someday in the future when I do something disco-y, perhaps I'll go over it with you guys and try to explain it better. But for now, the best way to handle it is just pretend you had a little glossy ball in front of you, put some light on it, you know, aim a light or a lamp directly on top of it or to the left or to the right of it or to the front of it or whatever, and see how the light surrounds that sphere it's going to be darker in some areas, brighter in other areas, and then that's how you would, you know, shade and color it in. And that's how that's how you would do a disco ball too. But like I said, we're not uh, we're not worrying about it too much today. It's just a coloring book. It's not that serious. But all of that to say that I am bringing in the colors that are surrounding her into the disco ball. For instance, right here, can you see that? Is that off camera? There's quite a bit of neon orange going on there, so that is where I'm going to put the orange color. Again, if this isn't making much sense at the moment, don't, don't worry about it. One day when I, again, when I create a piece of artwork that is more disco heavy, <laughs> then I will go into more detail, which um, I had planned on doing it once ages ago because somebody had questioned. They said, hey, you know, we'd be curious to know how you draw disco balls. And I thought, mm, not very many people are going to care about that subject matter, so I'll, I'll file it away one day and do it. And um, yeah, I've never forgotten about it, so I think I just don't think that most people care about disco balls, you know what I mean? So I just never have put it into my schedule to do, but yeah, maybe, 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 maybe. There was a period in time in which I would sketch, I would make fashion illustrations and I would give them disco ball heads. If you've been following my Instagram in recent weeks, you've noticed that I have been uh, revisiting the idea of fashion illustration with disco heads. I'm gonna show you. I dug up an old sketchbook of mine this is several years old, and uh, here, this is what I mean. So I would do fashion illustration. I would pull uh, fashions from the 70s and 80s. I would put my own spin on them, and I would create these adorable, this is also one of my outfits. <laughs> so I would create these little uh, disco head fashion illustrations. Aren't they cool? I freaking love them. Look how cool these are. Ugh, I love them so much. Love them so much. Love them so much. So, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been playing with that lately because the focus is on the fashion, not on the face, right? And I like that idea sometimes. All of my artwork is focused on the face and the fashion, but when there's a face, you get distracted by it, and I want you to focus on the fashion in those sketches. So, yeah, there you go. Tangent City today. She's just going off on tangents everywhere. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Pinky, 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 pink all over the place. We gotta throw some yellow on here. Yeah, don't be too careful. Uh, for those of you who've purchased my books that have disco balls in them, I can't off the top of my head tell you which ones those are. I know for a fact that Stardust Space Lust has at least one disco ball page and then Retro Deco does as well. But does anything, oh my gosh, I don't even know my own books, you guys. Huh, 
I can't think right now off the top of my head which other books of mine have a disco ball. <sighs> Does Graveyard Girls? I could have sworn that I illustrated a cartoon that kind of resembled me sitting on a disco ball. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, let's not dwell on it, but I, I, I can't I can't think right now, so who knows. But um, if you see the disco balls on my pages, don't freak out because you see them having all of these little squares and then you think, oh my god, I'm going to have to color all of those squares individually. No, you don't. No, you don't. I don't know where that idea came from. Um, I've seen it, though, when people color or illustrate disco balls, they agonize over every little square. And I'm thinking, have these people actually ever seen a disco ball? Because that's not what they look like. The colors bleed into themselves, much like I'm doing right here, where I'm just kind of laying down fields of color. That's exactly how they look. So there's no need to, there's no need to agonize whatsoever. You can if you want to. If you're in the mood to be a masochist, by all means. I don't kink shame around here. If you're a weird masochistic colorista, baby, go ahead, torture yourself. I'm all about it. Go ahead, go right ahead. I am here to facilitate your coloring kinks, not to uh, stifle them. You know that though, right? I always tell you to get messy. Get messy and have fun doing it, damn it. Always, always. I bet you'll never hear that anywhere, right? And if you do, now you know where they got it from. Coloring kinks, courtesy of yours truly. Okay, so we are going to Pick another color for the disco balls. Or you know what we'll do? Should we just do the accents later? Because I do want to bring in some purples, possibly some teals or something into the disco balls. But let's play with these elements here. I can't really tell you if she's wearing this one, if it's part of her headpiece, maybe it is. But these little thingamabobbers in the back here, I would like to do... Something in me still wants to play with a teal, and I can't really put my finger on why that is. So let's see what happens. Um, let's see what I've got in my arsenal here. We are slowly but steadily, guys, winding down all of my markers that I have, which is so good because once I whittle them down to a handful, that is when I'm going to start curating my color palettes. Oh, that could be a fun color, that green. That could be fun. That may be a bit too dark, too light, mm, too dull, mm, too blue. Okay, so that's that's the one. I do have a few more that I could potentially play with, but let's not, let's not agonize. And of course, on this paper, everything ends up looking darker than it should. So with that in mind, let's see. Okay, this is closer to the color tone that I wanted. What about that one that was way too light? Let's see what that one looks like. Oh, that actually doesn't look bad. That doesn't look bad. Let's, uh, it was far too light on the swatch. Do we see this? Because this is, this is a different kind of board that I'm using to swatch on, which I don't advise. Always swatch on exactly or as close to the paper that you are actually using. I'm just me, and I just 
don't really care. So I'm just letting you know. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. But uh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna do a little, a little blendy blend action. And then I'm going to work in silence for a while because you get the gist of what I'm doing. I think the bulk of the work on this one is going to be on highlighting. So what I'm going to do is finish up, maybe not all of the disco ball detailing, but I'm going to finish the background. Should I? Should I start coloring her outfit? Um, good question. I don't know what I'm going to do. Let's see. I'm going to think about it for a minute. Oops, I'm going to cut a majority of that <laughs> out of the video because it was uh, out of frame. But uh, seeing that there's so much detail on this page, uh, you might think that I would have spent a lot of time filling in all the tiny details and that's just not the case. Where the majority of the time is going to go is going to be in the highlighting because there are a lot of areas where I want to put highlights because we are attempting to give the illusion of this being lit up. So are we, are, are we going to be successful in that attempt? Well, you already know. You've already seen the thumbnail, so you know better than I do at this point whether this was going to be a successful page or not. But uh, that's what we're going to do. And we're just going to keep it moving. So I am going to go ahead and finish up these background elements and I'm going to show you how I'm going to incorporate these colors into those disco balls really quickly. So because I mentioned that disco balls pick up the colors around them, obviously they are reflective surfaces, they are glass, little pieces of glass. And so because there's some blue and teal in here, we're going to put some teal like this, not too much, but we're gonna do a little of that like so. I think that's enough for now and on this one we'll bring it in like that see you see what's happening there the colors are I'm purposely having them bleed a little bit to kind of give a liquid light look we are pulling the colors in from these elements up here, like that. And let's see. Now on these disco balls, because you can't see a whole lot of that, I am going to bring in just a touch of it. Not too much. And because I'm adding the blue and teal, it's going to be kind of reflective of where it's coming from in this direction. Now there's one up here as well, so then we're going to add a couple on this side as well, a couple of little sections of teal. See what I'm doing? So wherever the, the light source is coming from, that's the direction in which I'm going to be adding those colors. Again, not super explanatory, or at least not properly explanatory, but one day, one day, one day, one day maybe we'll discuss it. Okay, I'm going to move on to her outfit. As far as the color, uh, I thought I was going to go with a basic black, but I'm pretty sure I've changed my mind here because now I'm envisioning this latex creature wearing, uh, gosh, I don't know, bright green um, or... What other colors would look good? I kind of like the idea of a green, though. Hmm. I 
Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. You know what she could also be wearing? Oh my God. Silver, right? A really cool lurex -y type of silver, but it looks as though she's wearing more PVC. You know, we're going to go with the lime, I think. Okay. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go with a limey green, and I'm going to show you the color, and then I'm going to go off and uh, do my thing. So I'll do a little bit of the outfit. Yeah, much better choice than going with just a plain black. Now a glossy black would have looked really good on this page, but it's a cop out though. A glossy black, look, black is an easy way out for anything. You can't go wrong with black, you just can't. I love it, I love it, I do. <gasps> See what I just did? <laughs> Dropped my marker on Butterfingers. But I, I, um, I like black. It'll solve a lot of your problems, but also, why do you want to take the easy route in your coloring books, right? You want to have some fun. You want to make a mess. You want to try things that are not ordinary. So, black would have been very, very nice. Would have been a perfect color choice, but we're just not going to do it. We're not going to do it. And this will give me an excuse to put some lime green into these disco balls later. Okay, that is enough chit chat for this session. I'm going to work on this little vampy vamp for a while in silence and then I will check in with you in a bit. We are back late in the evening to do a little bit more work on this. I don't think I'm going to do much talking uh, during the last few portions of this video. It's probably going to be a shorter color and chat than usual but I'm not in the mood to talk. Um, I'm gonna be very busy tomorrow and I want to color. I just don't wanna run my mouth. So I would rather just listen to music or podcasts, you know, one of those things, cause I get things done quicker if I'm not running my mouth. But that being said, yes, my nails are a mess. I am changing my nail polish. I've changed my nail polish and I'm in the process of changing the color, multi coats of nail polish, glitter, shit like that. You know, it takes, it's a process. So my nails are a mess. I know. I was tempted to put the fake ones back on today, but I thought, you know what? No, just keep letting the natural ones grow out. This always happens. I let the naturals start growing back out and then I start missing the fake ones and then I put the fake ones back on and it ruins my natural nails and it's just, we're gonna try. We're gonna try to be good and let the natural nails grow. Damn it, we need to. So I am going to be, as you can see, I've already added some highlights to our little vampy lady here and I'm going to continue to add highlights, but this time in white. I went through with the white on the tombstones here, the neon crosses, and then also on her outfit. So you know what I'll do? To give you an idea of what I'm doing, um, we're going to add some, although they're not supposed to be sparkly, they're neon. I want to give the, the illusion of brightness so and illumination so to do that we're gonna add some sparkle a little bit of sparkle never hurt anyone so that's what we're gonna do and I'm going to do this throughout the page but for the purposes of this color and chat I'll just do it on the crosses and then a little bit on the disco ball so that you guys can see what I'm going to do, because I've been jumping around quite a bit on this one, I've been doing most of it off camera. And some of you might be interested in the shenanigans show. This is what we're gonna do. Like that, see? So it's giving it's giving the, the illusion of them being shiny, lit up, you know, that sort of thing. It did take a little bit of work to get here. Not a lot, but you saw me, or maybe you didn't see me. I don't even remember at this point what was and what was not on camera, but it, I used a couple different colors of pink and then I put yellow on top and then I put the pink highlight, the gel pen, and now we're going in with the, with the white highlight. Something came in the mail today that I want to share with you all. I will likely be sharing it 
in a vlog and on Instagram, but since we're chatting about it right now and since it came in the mail today, let me go ahead and show you what it is. Are we ready? Are we ready for this? The Coloring Haven, or rather Coloring Heaven, excuse me, Halloween Special. Why is this exciting? It's just, it's a coloring magazine. I'll give you a hint. This, this is why it's exciting. This right here. I am a featured artist in this issue. So here are the pages that are featured. I will, well, I'll just flip through because if you have my coloring books, you've already seen one of these pages, or rather these pages. But I did sneak in a Patreon exclusive because She's Halloween spooky, and I wanted to kind of pay homage and tribute to my Patreon patrons who've been with me, so I added this page in here. This was a Patreon page. This is not available in any coloring book. Uh, it's not available for download anywhere. It's just, it's in this. It's It was created for my Patreon patrons, uh, was it last year, I think? And then she's making another appearance. But there you go, I have a few pages in coloring heaven i won't talk too much about it but i did want to share it in this video now this is the united states version of the magazine the magazine in the uk and europe at large i believe features a few more of my coloring pages just logistically and just all sorts of reasons why they had to uh nix a few pages from the u.s issue but there you go. That magazine is available if you are interested. I'm not selling it. It's available through, you can purchase it at grocery stores from what I understand, uh, drug stores, and through their website. If you are a subscriber, well, you already have it. And uh, if you didn't notice, your girl is in it. So yay for that. That was kind of cool. Uh, if I sound not excited, you know how I am. I, I tend to not emote too much. I, it's just It's just me. You know, I'm not going to get on here screaming and crying, oh my god, you guys, I'm in a magazine. That may be how I'm feeling internally, but I don't express those emotions externally. But rest assured, I am happy about it, and it's just, it's cool. It's cool to see my work in a published magazine. I don't know if they even knew I existed, to be honest, before I reached out. They rejected me once, and... Had I not reached out years later, I wouldn't be in the magazine this time. And even better, because I'm in the Halloween issue, which could not be more appropriate for my life. And I know maybe that, that sounded as though I had a little bit of a cocky attitude by me saying, hey, it wasn't any of you in the group, because people were saying, oh, they finally listened to us. I'm not being cocky when I say that it wasn't your doing, it was my doing. I'm saying that because number one, it's the truth. And number two, again, it's a gentle push. It's a push me. It, the mama harpy is pushing you all out of the nest to be your own advocate, right? Because I, I reached out, I took initiative and I did the thing, right? So let that be a lesson to you. Don't depend on other people. Now I appreciate, I appreciate what everybody was saying, but Ultimately, I had to be the one to do it. So I am asking all of you, if you are interested in seeing me in that magazine in a full feature to then, yes, please, please let them know, be vocal about it. I would appreciate it. And I'm not forcing you to do anything. I'm just saying it's a collaborative effort. I'm not going to take credit for all of it, but for me actually being featured. Yeah, that was me. And yeah, I'm allowed to toot my own horn, as should you. So again, I greatly appreciate the support and I love that you guys are reaching out to me telling me about how excited you are. So keep it going, keep it going. If you wanna see me in a full issue, let them know. Because again, I can't do it all myself. And of course that message is gonna get misconstrued. I can already hear people with their trigger finger unsubscribing saying, oh my God, she's such a cocky, arrogant bitch, blah, blah, blah. That's how you feel you shouldn't be here in the first place, right? But those of you who understand what I'm saying, you get it, you get it, you get it. Collaboration. I wouldn't be here on YouTube continuing to make my videos for you all if I didn't enjoy it, number one, and number two, duh, if you guys did not enjoy it yourselves because 
take a look at my channel numbers. My channel has been stagnant for years. Very slow growing. I get 10 subscribers a month if I'm lucky. That to a normal person, quote unquote, to somebody who is looking for you know, fame and fortune on YouTube, they would have quit a long time ago because those numbers are not sustainable. I make zero money off of this channel. I make, if I'm lucky, $15 a month, maybe 20 on a good month, right? This is not, I'm not doing this for the money. This is my hobby. I enjoy it. Would I like a bigger audience? Sure. Duh. But that's not the impetus for my being here. Get it? So there you go. I can I can tell you guys how much I appreciate you until I'm blue in the face. And there's always going to be that one person who thinks I'm rude and blah, blah, blah. So whatever. Watch someone else then. Watch someone else. For everyone else, I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad you're enjoying partying with me because that's what this is. It's a big fat freak show of a coloring and illustration party over here. Yeah? How cute is this? I'm digging this. The more I'm adding the highlights, the more I'm loving her. She's turning out. And see, now I'm going to destroy. I'm going to destroy it all because I was going to say, oh, I love how she's turning out. She's looking so cute. And then watch. Five minutes from now, disaster. <laughs> Story of my life. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. See, I, I could have I done so much more on this page if I wasn't running my mouth. It's late at night. I have things to do tonight uh, here at home. I have work-related things to do, and I just, I don't know. Once your girl starts running her mouth, I can't stop. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you for uh, humoring me. I can't recall having seen, having seen anyone color this page if somebody has colored it in the past and tagged me in it and I didn't see it I apologize just feel free to re-tag me uh, on Instagram but hopefully this will encourage someone to color this page for a spooky season now you don't have to go the neon route you can do whatever color palette you'd like she would look really cute in a traditionally Halloween color palette, black, orange, purple, mm, purple, green, orange, you know, that sort of thing. So she would look good in any color, but uh, it, it's just something a little bit different. She's not your traditional spooky vampire girl, but that's what makes her great. Okay, so now that you get the gist of what I'm doing, with the highlights. I'm going to show you one more little tidbit of what I'm going to do with her because as I mentioned earlier, I'm quite positive that I'm going to have this page done in another session and I will likely not be doing much talking, if at all, in that coloring session. So let me I'm going to put down the highlighting pen. I still have lots of highlights to do still on this page, but to show you, we are going to grab, where are you guys? Definitely the silver, but I also wanted to grab, where the hell is it? I wanted to get, the gold sparkle pop. I know I have one. I've had one lying around. I saw it earlier. Where did you go? Oh. Ugh. Where is it? I believe that was my last. Okay, well, if it decides to, to materialize, we'll use it. But I was going to do a glitter on this page. So I'll go ahead and show you uh, on the disco balls, at least, because disco balls are not silver necessarily, but this will give you the illusion of glass. Ooh, matches my nails. Like so. You see how cute that is? It's not going to be all over the disco ball 
but we're just gonna slap some glitter on a few of the little mirrored tiles, the little squares. Cute. Gets a little lost when you are looking at the page. You have to kind of move it around in order for you to see it, but once you notice it, it's a nice little, subtle is not quite the right word for it, but it's a nice little accent to the page. Cute. All right, you've seen enough, or rather you've heard enough, right? So I'm going to end this here. If I end up deciding to sit down for another chatty session, great, I will see you for that. And if I don't, well, I will see you at the very end of the video to show you the final page, to share any final thoughts. You know, if you've been on my color and chats, you know, you know, the, you know, you know the gig. All right, so I will see you later. I actually have no final thoughts. This is going to be the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed peeking this lovely little synthwave vampire girl. As always, links will be down below to my social media, to places you can purchase the book, and everything you need to know. It will always be down below. Be bad, be good. I don't give a damn which. Just make sure you come back in one piece. That is going to do it for today. Thank you, thank you, thank you once again, and I will catch you in the next one.